No, Jess. I really like Beckham. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best coming out scenes in movies. Oh, Daddy. I'm a lesbian. A big one. For this list, we'll be looking at the most iconic and authentic scenes of characters coming out to their friends, family, or even themselves. Did we miss any coming out scenes you think should have been included? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Eric comes out to his mother, age of 17. Living in 1980s Ohio, Eric comes to terms with his sexuality at his summer job, where he becomes friends with his lesbian manager Angie and falls for a college boy named Rod. So you want cheese fries? I want cheese fries, yes I do. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Come on, my treat. This is a proper date. When school starts back up again, he changes his hairstyle and buys a new wardrobe, fully leaning into his newfound orientation. This aesthetic transformation makes his parents suspicious, but it's not until the film's end that he actually comes out to his mother. He debates telling her it was all a phase, but ultimately decides the truth is better than fiction. Her response? I know. She doesn't quite know how to handle the news beyond that affirmation, but she holds him close and tries her best to understand. Number 19. Gunn comes out to his parents, make the Yuletide gay. Gunn may be out as gay to his peers, but he still hasn't worked up the courage to tell his parents. He decides to finally do the deed at Christmas, while his boyfriend Nathan and his parents sit around him at the dinner table. I'm gay. At first, it seems like his parents may have a negative reaction, as they silently move around the table and exchange glances. But then it's revealed that they were betting on his sexuality the whole time. I told you so. <laughs> you owe me a hundred bucks, kiddo. I'm taking it out of your inheritance. Years prior, Gunn's parents had bet on whether or not he was gay, and his mom won with his coming out. After laughing about the situation, the pair comfort their son, telling him he's an honest man and reassuring him that they love him. I love you guys. We love you. Always have. Always will. Number 18. Alex confesses to Claire. Alex Strangelove. Sometimes figuring out your sexuality isn't as easy as going from point A to point B, a fact that Alex True Love knows all too well. Right, but how did you how did you like know you were gay and not bi or something like that? The protagonist of Alex Strangelove originally thinks that he may be bisexual and tests this theory by sleeping with a girl at a party. The experimental encounter leads to an understandably awkward situation with his girlfriend, Claire, but finally confirms his lack of attraction to women, a realization that's only reinforced by the sudden recollection of a traumatic moment in his childhood. Claire finds Alex shortly after, and he says he's gay out loud for the first time. Claire. I'm gay. When she finally finds the words to respond, she's initially defensive, but eventually comes around to accepting their new dynamic. Oh. No, you're the best gay boyfriend a girl could have. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. Aaron kisses his neighbor, Latter Days. It's no surprise that Latter Days was controversial upon release. The film, which is about a closeted gay missionary, only screened at 19 theaters and was constantly under threat of protest. You found me out, all right? My worst secret. I'm humiliated, so your work is done here. Nonetheless, its depiction of gay love continues to ring true for many formerly religious members of the LGBTQIA community. The movie's most memorable scene comes around the halfway point, after one of Aaron's fellow missionaries is badly injured. I was, I was thinking, I wasn't even paying attention. His gay neighbor, Christian, comforts him with a hug, which then leads to a kiss between the two men. Aaron has barely accepted his sexuality at this point, but is forcibly outed when his roommates walk in on the intimate moment. While Aaron's parents and church cast him out, Christian's found family welcome him with open arms. Whatever our successes or failures come this time of year, you will always have a place at my table and a place in my heart. Number 16. Megan comes out to True Directions and herself, but I'm a cheerleader. Before someone can come out to other people, they must first come out to themselves. And this scene from But I'm a Cheerleader perfectly illustrates that light bulb moment in its protagonist, Megan. Everyone reads Cosmo. Everyone looks at other girls all the time. But you only assume that they're thinking what you're thinking when they look. But they're not. 
Although Megan's parents send her to True Directions in the hopes that it makes her straight, the conversion therapy camp ends up having the opposite effect. Surrounded by other gay and lesbian teenagers, she's finally able to accept herself as a lesbian. She falls in love with a girl named Graham, and after a very public display of affection at their graduation ceremony, her parents reluctantly begin to come around to their daughter's sexuality. Number 15. Alike comes out to her parents, Pariah. Alike's turbulent home life makes it difficult to find the right time to come out. I'm not your companion, and I'm not your friend. You made that abundantly clear. I'm your daughter, and I have my own shit to deal with. Near the end of Pariah, an argument between her parents about her father's alleged infidelity turns into an argument about her style of dress and sexuality. Alike's father tells her to deny her mother's assertion that she is a lesbian, but instead she confirms it. You tell your mother that's not true. You already know. No, I don't know. You tell your mom it's just a phase. It's not a phase. In response, her mother gets violent. The traumatic scene is a harrowing reminder of an unfortunate reality for far too many in the community. Thankfully, Alike is able to escape her bad situation and chooses to forge her own path as her authentic self. Breaking is freeing. Broken is freedom. I am not broken. I'm free. Number 14. Joe comes out to his dad, Cowboys. Joe doesn't like to wear dresses, a fact he makes clear every time he's told to put one on. After years of playing dress up, he finally hits his limit and tells his dad that he's not a girl. Uh, okay, you're a tomboy, you don't want to wear dresses anymore, I'll work on it. I'm not a tomboy. What? Tomboy's just another type of girl, but I'm not a girl. His father, Troy, is initially taken aback by the assertion, thinking that Joe must mean he's a, quote, tomboy. But Joe is adamant that he's just as much of a boy as his father is. Dad! Boy! I'm in the wrong body, okay? I'm a boy! Joe may not know the word transgender, but his passionate plea for acceptance is enough to convince Troy that his child is serious. With so few trans coming out stories in film and television, the combination of Troy's support and Sasha Knight's authentic performance feels like a breath of fresh air. You don't believe me. I do believe you. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. You don't. I do. I promise. Number 13. Bobby comes out to his brother Ed. Prayers for Bobby. When Bobby's brother Ed finds him in his room with pills strewn across the floor, he expects the worst. Thankfully, Bobby couldn't go through with taking the pills, but still has a huge weight on his shoulders. Bobby, you're scaring me. What, what, what's going on? You'd all hate me. I know it. I know that if you guys knew the truth, you'd hate me. He fears that he's going to hell for reasons he's afraid to tell his family. After a short but emotional conversation, Bobby's brother finally coaxes him into saying what's bothering him. He's gay. I don't dream about girls like you do. I dream about guys. You're gay? See? You even say it like you hate me! Bobby insists that the secrets stay between them. Ed promises, but immediately tells their mother about the conversation. Although Ed's outing of his brother is well-intentioned, it directly causes a downward spiral for the protagonist from which he never recovers, epitomizing the dangers of outing someone to an unsupportive parent against their will. Number 12. Jamie comes out to his crush, Beautiful Thing. When Jamie's crush, Stee, winds up in a bad situation, Jamie's mother allows him to sleep in their home. Without an extra bedroom, the two are forced to awkwardly share a bed. The peppermint foot lotion. Saves your feet. On the second night, Jamie gives Stee a massage and the two get to talking. Jamie reassures Stee that he's not ugly. Turn the light off. No. Please. I don't wanna. After a period of tense silence, Jamie kisses Stee. Stee asks if Jamie thinks he's queer, to which Jamie replies, it Don't matter what I think. With no further elaboration needed on either boy's sexuality, they fall asleep in each other's arms. The interaction feels incredibly natural and proves that you don't have to have things fully figured out to come out. Number 11. Mitch mentions his boyfriend, Paranorman. Sometimes coming out is a big deal. Sometimes it's more casual. Throughout Paranorman, Courtney makes no secret of her crush on Mitch. It appears as if the movie's leading up to the two being romantically paired by the end. Mitch. Mitch. 
we die tonight, this may be the last chance I get to tell you how I feel. But when she finally asks him to go out, the audience is thrown a huge curveball. Mitch is gay. He agrees to hang out with Courtney, whom he believes is named Kathy, but adds that she's going to love his boyfriend. He's like a total chick flick nut. Courtney may be disappointed by this revelation, but we're delighted by such nonchalant representation in a children's movie. Baby, I'm so sorry. You'll be all right. We're gonna get through this together. Number 10. Howard comes out at his wedding. In and out. No, this movie isn't about the popular California-based burger chain. It's about Howard a small-town Indiana high school teacher who's outed at the Oscars by a former student. Someone who's just an overall great guy and a great teacher. To Howard Brackett from Greenleaf, Indiana. Oh, 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 oh wow. I can't believe oh, it. wow. Oh. And he's gay. Due to late 90s ignorance, Bedlam erupts, leaving Howard to deny the claim at every turn. Only he really is gay and can't seem to admit it to himself, until he's standing at the altar with a woman. So instead of saying, I do, he says, I'm gay. Sure, not the best time to come out with it, but it proves to be something of a relief, and something he might not have been able to do had he not been lip-locked by a hunky Tom Selleck a few scenes prior. You know what you need? I need a wedding! I need Number 9. Frank admits his feelings to his wife. Far from heaven. Strange as it may seem, we really should be saying Academy Award nominee Dennis Quaid, because he absolutely kills it alongside Julianne Moore in a movie about a 50s housewife who discovers her husband is gay. I've fallen in love with someone who wants to be with me. Dropping in unexpectedly at the latter's office after hours, Morris Kathy Whitaker is shocked to see her husband with another man and promptly runs home. There the two have an appropriately tense moment, where Quaid's Frank admits to having had incidents when he was younger. A long time ago. A long, long time ago. I had, um... Uh, um, uh, problems. Not finding the exact words, Frank is unable to come out completely, and it's this inner turmoil and emotional resonance that makes this such a powerful scene. Just figured that was, that was it. I, I never imagined. You had problems. Yes. Number eight, Mike professes his love for Scott, my own private Idaho. A sex worker who struggles with crippling bouts of narcolepsy, River Phoenix's Mike Waters has a constrained relationship with sexuality and love. How do we get home? After sleeping with various clients earlier in the film, Mike finally has a tender moment with his friend Scott when they reach the titular state. If I had a normal family and a good upbringing, then I would have been a well-adjusted person. Sitting by a campfire, Mike takes a quiet moment to reflect upon what it would mean to love someone without being paid for it. While Scott says that he only sleeps with men for money, Mike maintains that he loves him anyway, as much as it hurts. I mean, for me, I could love someone even if I, you know, wasn't paid for it. I love you and you don't pay me. It's a heart-wrenching scene, one that's elevated by the agitation going on underneath Phoenix's nuanced performance. Number 7. Jessica comes out to her mother, kissing Jessica Stein. Unable to come to grips with her nascent bisexuality, Jessica keeps her relationship with Helen a secret. Look, look, I am so tired of this. I am so tired of being left out of half of your life. We're in a rela just in a relationship, whether you like it or... However, when that reticence puts a strain on their relationship, she can't hide her emotions. Comforted by her mother, who's previously tried to set her up with men, Jessica gets the catharsis she needs without having to say very much at all. And I thought to myself, Oi, this child will suffer. In a touching scene, the Elder Stein woman is able to infer the subtext and gives Jessica her approval to be with Helen. I think she's a very nice girl. 
The two then hug as Jessica is finally able to accept and embrace who she really is. Number 6. Jared Comes Out To His Parents – Boy Erased Coming out can be even more difficult when it conflicts with a previously established religious belief, and more difficult still when family members struggle to understand for the same reason. I'm a counselor at Dan in college. I'm afraid I have some disturbing news about your son's behavior at school. What? What about him? In this biographical drama based on a memoir, Jared has it especially hard when the classmate who assaulted him outs him to his Baptist parents. Initially, Jared is defensive and denies it. His name is Henry Wallace. He's, he's not a counselor, he's a student. Right. And, and he told me he did some bad things I think he thinks I'm gonna tell on him. But then he storms into the kitchen and tells his parents the truth. It's an especially sober moment, one that leaves his parents speechless and in shock. Unfortunately, things would only get worse for Jared, who's later forced into an abusive conversion therapy program. But in this brave moment, he refuses to compromise his honesty. We broke up because I think it's true about me. God help me. I think about men. Number 5. Simon Comes Out To His Friend Abby – Love, Simon This movie has so many coming out scenes, we hardly knew where to begin. You still believe in love? Maybe. Have you ever been in love? I think so. In fact, we might have more in store for later. For now, though, we simply had to appreciate this straightforward coming out that sees the titular Simon confide in his friend Abby. Feeling secure talking about intimate things, Simon pulls over the car and does what he's been dreading the entire film. Abby? Yeah? I'm gay. And we've got to say, Abby's reaction is spot on, unflinching but not making a big deal out of it as the two come closer together. Unfortunately, he's unable to come out on his own terms to his other friends later on, but Simon definitely deserved this win while it lasted. But you're not surprised. Do you want me to be surprised? I don't know. Okay. Well, I love you. Number 4. Sam Comes Out To Her Father – Blockers Having your parents track you down on prom night to prevent you from having sex would be the worst. I'm gonna shove his fedora so far up his ass, it'll be a hat! But fortunately, Sam's situation is a little bit different. Convinced that she's a lesbian and that she'll reluctantly be intimate with her male date, Sam's father, Hunter, barges into her hotel room expecting the worst. Fortunately, Sam has better judgment than he thinks, as her date has already left. But the encounter leads to a surprisingly tender moment. Is that I let what happened between your mom and I get in the way of our relationship. I'm sorry. After Hunter apologizes for his behavior in the wake of his divorce to Sam's mom, Sam takes the opportunity to do something she's never done. Dad, can I tell you something now? Yes, 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 anything. I'm a lesbian. Of course, Hunter already knows, but her official coming out brings the two together in a way that's funny and sweet. Number 3. Hal Comes Out To His Son Oliver – Beginners through the narration of Ewan McGregor's character, we learn that his father only came out after his mother's death. Six months later, my father told me he was gay. He had just turned 75. I'm gay. They'd been married for 44 years. Being a snippet of a memory, it's a quick coming out. But the alternate remembrances and takes featuring Christopher Plummer lighten the moment so that it matches the quirky humor of the film. I'm gay. I'm gay. I loved your mother, but... Uh... Now I want to explore this side. Not only that, but it sets up Hal's transformation in his final years into what he's always wanted to be, and is part of a performance that would win Plummer the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Number 2. Kevin and Chiron Kiss on the Beach – Moonlight Kevin and Chiron's abbreviated romance begins on a beachfront at night. Yeah. You like the water? Well, I can introduce you to some fire. The two joke around, but the talk soon turns introspective and sees Kevin put his hand on Chiron. Nah, you trying to get smart with me, huh, Chiron? Yeah, you trying to get smart with me, huh? 
The moment quickly turns romantic as the two share a kiss, ending with Kevin giving Chiron his first sexual experience. While neither verbally come out per se, they're able to express such feelings to each other that they never could to their peers. It's a passionate scene, and one that's made all the more emotional in light of their subsequent falling out and reunion. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Simon comes out to his parents. Love, Simon. While this scene is by no means the climax, it certainly feels like it, since the whole coming out to your parents thing was hilariously established in the movie's intro. I'm gay. Honey. And I don't want you guys to think anything different. I'm still me. Of course um, you are. Taking place on Christmas morning, Simon gives his parents perhaps the greatest gift of all by letting them know a side of him they hadn't previously. While his mother plays it cool, his father tries to hide his emotions with ill-timed humor. Which one of your old girlfriends turned you? Was it the uh, the one with the big eyebrow or Jesus the one with the Christ, braces? Can you ever shut the hell up? I'm kidding. While it's not the most joyous reveal, it proves especially cathartic later on when Simon speaks to his father privately, who now can't hold back the tears. This time they embrace, with his father saying he wouldn't change anything about Simon. Yeah, stop crying. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> the character also has a powerful one-on-one -on -one with his mom. But you get to exhale now, Simon. Great, now we're crying too. Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.